Hello, friends, and welcome to a brand new mini series of High Rolls DD called Uncharted Territory. Sponsored by Wizards of the Coast, this is part of their brand new module, The Tomb of Annihilation, which will be coming very, very soon to stores and online retailers near you. Check out the DD website for more information. Uh, <laughs> these guys are screwing around. Come for is it nice to see Matt again? It yeah. is very nice to see Matt again. You ruined it. I was going to do do my thing. I'm your regular dungeon master, Mark Sherlock Humes. Thank you very much for joining us. And joining us this week, a return of a great, a high rollers Ooh. legend, oh, Mr. You. Matthew Tofolo. Oh, and you still get me name wrong. Tofolo. Yeah, Tofolo. Yeah, Tofolo. yeah, after a year. Look, I, can't get right. I say Hazel's name with one L every time, and he still gets wound up by that. So, you know, I just don't get the names right. So, Matthew Tofolo. Yeah, that's right. There we go, joining us. Kim Richards. Hi. Katie Morrison. Hello. And Chris Trot of Hat Films. Thank you. Uh, these are our regular players mm. here for Uncharted Territory. Ten weeks of adventure await you. Uh, <laughs> as mentioned, this is a sponsored stream. Thank you very much, Wizards, for doing this. Um, and it follows on from the stream of Annihilation. If you would like, if you enjoy the stream and you would like to watch more of our D&D adventures, you can do so every Sunday on twitch.tv forward slash Two days from now. Two days from now. 5pm BST. And that is our regular campaign. It's a homebrew world. And hopefully you'll enjoy that as much as you enjoy this. So that's 9pm PT. I'm going to trust his opinion. No, 9 a.m. PT. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 9 a.m. PT. So, let's get things started. So, this adventure is going to be taking place in the Forgotten Realms, one of the official D&D &D campaign settings. But more importantly, you are all playing brand new characters. So, people who are familiar with High Rollers, you are playing completely different characters. You're not playing your High Rollers characters. I think you should introduce them. Um, we'll start with Mr. Chris Trott. Thank you. Uh, I am playing six frisky flames. A tabaxi catman with a ruby for his left eye. He is mysterious. He loves the stories behind artifacts. And once he finds the story in the artifact, he likes to throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's done, like a true cat. He shoves it off the and shelf. And he has a climbing speed. <laughs> okay, <Yeah. laughs> thank you. Very good. Oh, did you forget that when you were trapped yeah, in the hole? Yeah, everyone did. That would have been a good one. see. That would have been quite good in our prologue. <laughs> thank you, Chris Trot. Katie. Then. Tell uh, us who you are playing. I am playing Thea. She is a half-elf rogue, and she is a bit of an urchin. Grew up on the streets, doesn't really have any friends, and she is pretty much in it for the money. She doesn't care about it. Real classic much archetypal else. thief. So you are here to get past all the traps and dangers. Kim, please, speak your mind. on Thea's thing, it says cunning action in and out. Yeah, I actually <laughs> did. She didn't. She hasn't seen this. Super yet. slippery. I seen this. In and out. Stealthy blues. <laughs> Hello. That's you are a fiend. The high caliber you can come to expect from the high rollers crew. I'm so happy I'm with myself. I'm so sorry, Wizards of the Coast. I'm so sorry. We're gonna Kim. change that for next week. Kim, why don't you tell us about your oh, character? Please do not change that. Uh, I am playing Kalar Ragehorn. Uh, for the Star Trek fans there. Uh, she is a half-orc barbarian uh, and she's completely different to my regular character. She's all about fun and drinking and fighting and flirting and... And watching. you're not just a barbarian, you're, you're an intellectual as well. You're, yes. a, you're an archaeologist. I'm an archaeologist. Um, so you have a love of, of cultures. It is a new background yeah. in the Tomb of Annihilation. Yeah. Uh, so I'm kind of like a... Spot? Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones, um, but Nathan get, Drake yeah, style kind of like... Yeah, you get really angry. It's yeah, like Nathan Drake is the Hulk. Yeah, I punch stuff, I well, break my way into tombs with respect, and then I just respect. love... I love learning history and culture. I'm not about the money, I'm about the kind of like the, the history. Mm. Um, and uh, Kalar and Catboy... Six treasure hunters. Are sort of like, yeah, we're, we're old... Yeah, friends, because yeah. like we we work together to mm -hmm. um, find stuff. I know you stuff. can get the job done. Yes, excellent. And, okay. and, that, pull you out of holes and that brings well. us on to a character who is not in our prologue. Sandy, you can join us out in Seattle, Mr. Matthew. Please tell us the big reveal of who you are playing. So I am playing Sir Cromsby Regnus Dolnum the <laughs> Third. Ah, I love money. You know, <laughs> money is my game. I don't like all this history, artifacts, as long as it gives me a bit of money, so long as I can line my pocket. Yes, that's all I'm after. Shallow. Yes, and, and Fia here, she works for me, she's, 
She's my woman on the streets, you know, picking the pockets. Basically, he's too lazy <laughs> to do it himself. <laughs> he's too lazy to do it himself, so he employs Little him legs, you see. I'm a dwarf, so I've got little legs. <laughs> I, can't, I can't run like I used to, you know. Not back when you had long <laughs> legs. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. <laughs> yeah, more agile legs, the knees, you see. Uh, yes. Now, the it's keen eyed the the in the audience will notice that Sir Cromsby is a bard, but he's not a musical bard. This no. is a bard of wits and insults and cunning words, effectively. Yes. He's not uh, uh, some minstrel. Sticks and stones. Now, yeah. <laughs> so the one of the things that we didn't... Uh, the others will have like a small magic item, and I've not given you the stats for this, but we discussed it. Yeah, And yeah, yeah. you have uh, what I have dubbed uh, the Mithril Donkey, uh, <laughs> which is a figurine of wondrous power. Um, you can summon for eight hours a day, and yeah. it is a donkey that you can ride. Um, it has an extremely high carry allowance, so you can laden it with treasure, but it has a speed of... 20 foot, <laughs> so it goes very slowly, and if it is it threatened, pops. it will buck and attack any creature near it, throwing off anybody who happens to be riding it. Uh, so that's just for your knowledge, okay. you have your mithril donkey, you may name it as you wish, um, but that is your, your little magic item that I've given everybody, so that's yours. Um, and there are our stories. Shall I begin? Yes. Very well. The world of Toril is most famous for the continent of Faerun. A place of wild lands peppered with shining kingdoms, dangerous mountains, and deep secrets hidden within the shadows. Empires large and small, city-states, villages, are struggling to make their way in a world that is unforgiving, unforgiving but laden with potential. Elves, dwarves, halflings, and many other races call Faerun home. Magic, whilst not common, is never far away, and legends carve stories into the very history of the world. Faerun has seen the rise of draconic goddesses, insane demon lords, and even a rampaging army of giants. But that is not what this story is about. This tale begins in the city of Waterdeep, the city of splendors. One of the greatest cities of the Sword Coast, Waterdeep is a stable and generally peaceful city where rule of law is enforced by good watchmen and even a few heroes of the realm. A port town, Waterdeep is protected by a huge sea wall that is guarded by merfolk with whom the city has an agreement. The finest ships in all the realms dock here to trade and restock before sailing to unknown lands. From the docks, following several well-coupled streets, passing taverns with flickering yellow lanterns as the night begins to fall and blacksmith's fiery forges, is a tall manor house in one of the more affluent merchant districts. The house is protected by a thick black iron fence and stone masonry. Outside, a pair of guards in trim leather tunics and clean shirts stand watch beside a dark wood engraved door where a bronze plaque set in the stone next to it reads, The Waterdeep Historical Society Headquarters. Now, the three of you, Six, Fia and Kayla, you had a bit of um, trouble on a recent adventure that you were sent on by Sir Cromsby. Um, and you have spent two weeks making your way back from the Kalimshan Desert where you've had to barter trade and, and transportation, steal supplies, um, and do whatever you could to survive. You have permanent residence at the Waterdeep Historical Society and you know that you can get a warm bed, good food, soft <coughs> pillows, and more importantly, some well-needed R&R. And so you have made your way there um, and you enter through the large double doors into a plush kind of foyer. You, you have your identification and you are allowed to pass. Thick tapestries and rugs hang on the sides, rich wooden mahogany panelling, stone floors, and the very murmur of gossip and, co and conversation echoes around you. Um, servants open another set of double doors which lead into a large lounge. Several tables where men, are playing, men and women are playing cards and drinking brandy. Armchairs surround a large roaring fireplace. Uh, there are glass cabinets around the rooms with bookshelves and all sorts of artifacts and trinkets. Um, and two large bay windows with their thick drapes closed. Uh, can, you can just hear, begin to hear the faint patter of rain beginning to fall outside. So Cromsby, you are enjoying a lovely snifter of brandy or whatever your, fur, your yes. fur drink. A good cigar perhaps oh. as well. Just enjoying your moment. Just You know that things have gone badly. You have a little bit of money saved, but you know, you're know you going to need a new job soon. 
Um, and you've been waiting for this lot to return to kind of hear the full story and try and, you know, gather your thoughts on what your plans are. And you see these three bedraggled looking individuals, um, a bit tired, a bit dusty, a bit worn out, kind of enter. And you all three, Sir Cromsby, sitting there with his slippers, um, cigar, brandy snifter, uh, being attended, you know, they, the, the servants bring over like, oh, would you like some salted nuts, my lord? Oh, yes, yes. give me a handful of those. <laughs> oh, they, just, they just leave the bowl next to you and just head off. Oh, um, and you guys can see around that there's a few faces you, you recognize, kind of other scholars, adventurers, um, who are all part of the historical society, which you all know is a front for adventurers, historians, scholars who'd like to go to probably places that they shouldn't to recover artifacts. Um, and yeah, you guys all enter and you see Crumsby sat there. So I'm going to flump down in a chair next to him and just take his brandy. And I'm just going to be like, oh, woe is me, for I am undone. Uh, my well, love, well, well. my beautiful prince of the seas. Look what the bloody cat dragged in. And that's not an affront against you, Six, although it should be, you one-eyed bastard. <laughs> I was going to add to your joke. Yes. But now, no comment. <laughs> I'm just kind of like monologuing about my broken like heart. Like about Fliss. Like Kayla, can drinking you drinking keep this me. quick? This my drama. love, <laughs> you took oh, my heart oh, and oh, ran yes, into yes. the Two weeks of this, very, Cromsby. Very Two weeks tricky. of this. Two weeks? <laughs> Bloody hell, I think you can't tell the time, my boy. What? A month I've been waiting for you. What? A month. No, I've been counting the sun. Well, it was technically... You know, nearly a month with yeah, the journey then. setting out and then you guys coming back. Has it been a month, Kayla? <laughs> yes, it's very, very dramatic and everything. She lost her love, yes. Where <laughs> did you hire that bastard? Ah, uh, <laughs> yes. What was his name? Um, Flisk. Flisk was his name. Ah, uh, Flask, yes. Flisky, Flasky, Flisky, Flask. Flask, Flask, Flisk. Yes, well, Kayla, well, you please. know. I got him on the cheap, didn't I? So oh, what was it? explains it. Stab you in the back, did he? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he took everything while he went as well. Oh, God, God. Yes. Stole my heart! He took oh, he oh there, that. there, <laughs> me dear. Here, have some more brandy. Uh, my lords and ladies are welcome. If you could just keep it down ever so slightly, and then you can see How that... How can I keep it quiet? Uh, All the pure Miss, sadness Miss, in my heart! Miss Ragehorn, uh. please, and he offers you just a huge, like, uh, pitcher, basically, of ale. Uh, he just, like, plants it that down. Could work! He's just like, please just take um, he plant the, this kind of uh, servant thin moustache, kind of top, ca uh, top tail coat. Uh, he places various snacks, um, olives and nuts and uh, dried fruits all around the place. Uh, he brings out whatever drinks you guys request or desire um, and places it on the ground. On the shoulder with a claw. My lord, some fish. Cooked or? No, some old chunks. Very well, yes. I shall ask our yes. In a bowl. <laughs> he heads off. Just put it on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> he just heads off. Thank uh, you. Drifts away. Um, and yeah, drinks anything that you guys request, uh, he brings over. As you guys are kind of talking though, uh, some figures, like you can see them kind of looming in. And the first one who approaches you is, you, is this kind of uptight looking heart, a sun elf. Tan skin, golden eyes, golden hair tied back, wearing very wizardly robes. Um, he's kind of holding a book. And he comes up, I couldn't help but over here. I take it that your last expedition didn't go very well. And you all know that this, uh, this particular snobby elf is a, a, a terrible, uh, kind of holier than thou, thinks that nobody else except elves and begrudgingly dwarves, because they live so long, can actually learn anything about history. Uh, his name is Qualian Soothspeaker. Nah, uh, you see, Crumsby, I knew that you should have sent me and my companions rather than your colourful friends here. <laughs> I'm going to say it honestly. Yes, Kim, uh, quickly. How pretty is he? How pretty is he? Not massively. He's oh, more a bookish type. I'm still drinking. I'm His crying. surname? Soothspeaker. I'm going to plonk myself down in a chair, kick off my boots. Yeah, They're muddy They're horribly boots. muddy yeah. and gross and just start. Do you wear Take socks? Out, uh... Like no. kitten socks? No, okay. And then take out one of my daggers and just start cleaning the dirt from under my nails and just not paying attention to him at all. Ugh, he kind of like shudders a little bit. It's a terrible shame who they'll let join the society these days. Isn't it, uh, He Josh? also, I should point out, he wears a small fez. He actually has like a red fez and he looks like he wears like long robes. Um, if you've ever seen The Mummy, he looks like the scholarly guy in that. But, <laughs> yeah. but an elven version. Um, I'm still like, just like, you know... So... 
I heard that Flisk <laughs> ran off with all of your ill-gotten gains, I suppose. Uh, well, yes, well, it seems that news travels fast around mm. these here parts. And it does in society, as you well know, Crumsby. Mm. Tell me, what, what's next on the agenda? Gonna go tomb robbing, perhaps? <laughs> 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 Well, we're just uh, trying to get our head back in the game. You see, these Ooh. poor buggers have been out traveling for quite a while. Mm. You know, look at this one, mangy fur. This one, this poor old dame has had her heart broken. I'm poor sobbing. little love. Yeah. Heads back in the game. No, I just, can, can we go out? Because that was a lot of treasure that he took. Yes. And I didn't get anything. And I didn't even get the full picture of the story behind the staff. Did you happen to learn anything while you were there? Staff, you say? Yes, How a beautiful staff. I'm sure uh, some likely inscribed in some language yes. you don't understand. Runes. Ah, what a shame. I probably could have read it if I'd been there. Oh, yes, I yes. bet you could. Well, my considerations, I've put some, a uh, little bit of coin behind a bar if you do fancy anything on the special menu. <laughs> <laughs> and then he like waves <laughs> and he kind of makes his way off. I'm going to go over to the bar. Okay. The most expensive thing you have. He like, Two! He likes Star on, on the money that's behind the it's bar. It's a human man. Yeah. Bah! My good, good lass. That. You're not talking about it, are you? The what? special. Does it cover the money that he put behind the bar? Oh, for two? Only just. That'll be the whole amount. Do it. Three! Like, I can only afford you two. I don't care if you have one, whatever. No, you will not have another. <laughs> I don't you know how you're weeping like a half orc baby for Give another two weeks. <laughs> he takes out, he goes behind and he opens a special little cabinet and he pulls out a tiny little bottle like this. He takes it out and he like gingerly holds it over a glass and he pulls out the tiny snifter and as it opens this strong citrus smell just begins to waft through the air. And as he pours it you watch as this almost like rainbow colour liquid kind of begins to fill a glass. And it changes from yed, red to yellow to green, and eventually it settles on an amber, like almost like a sunset colour. Um, and then he goes like, whoa, he puts it back, you know, give it a minute, and then suddenly the top of it kind of bursts on fire. And he's like, blow it out quick, if you're going to drink it. I take both of them. Okay. Blow it out and give one to Cromsby. <laughs> uh, he I mean, that. He, he said you couldn't have one, so... Yes. Since when did he speak for me? All the time. Hey, Frisky, and I just take out some string and just throw it out. <laughs> <in. laughs> I, I jump for it immediately. Okay, <laughs> so you're like clambering around off. Have my ball! <laughs> yeah. uh, it kind of like rolls around, you manage to pick it up. I'm rolling around on the floor with okay. it. Okay, yeah. yeah, you're just, yeah. Man, the society is kind of knows you guys, and this is kind of expected. Um, the two of you, uh, he's just like, no, don't, don't down it. The flaming topo is one of the most dangerous drinks in Faerun. Oh, bollocks to you, boy. <laughs> I bet I can take this in one gulp. And chin, you... chin. <laughs> okay. it. Constitution saving throw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it poison? So you have, well, it counts oh, as poison. So you have well, advantage. You have my... advantage because you're a dwarf. Uh, roll, again. roll again. So you had the highest. Oh, well, that didn't really <laughs> help. <laughs> He's back. Eight. Eight. You kind of drink it, and there is this kind of, I mean, have you ever had that thing where you were like, I'm sober, sober, oh god, and the room is spinning, and oh, you shit. are very, very drunk at this point. Fear? Seeing where he was, I just think, actually, enjoy. <laughs> Anything for you, my love. Oh, don't start that again, it's been two weeks. Seriously. And I'm just going to make a toast to the prince of my heart. Your hair was wonderful. <laughs> the traitor. I will love you all. The traitor of your heart. <laughs> Are you going to down it? Yep. Constitution saving throw. <laughs> Plus oh. five. So what's that? <laughs> it's an eight, right? Eight, thirteen. 13. Just a, you, it's, I mean, you've got a strong buzz off this drink. Like, you feel ready, but you've got that, oh, you're amped up, you're ready. Like, woo, you're kind of feeling good to go. I start singing. Um, yeah, you can start. But what, what are you singing? Love ballads. Love ballads. Like, I love the... No, that's not a love ballad. It's gonna go with Bed of Roses. <laughs> I love you, um, Ball. <laughs> oh, stop that bloody caterwauling! I expect caterwauling from the bloody cat. A little halfling fellow, sort of like black leather jerkin, kind of tall boots, uh, big sideburns, but no beard or moustache, kind of curly hair. Yes. Is he cute? Uh, He's kind of got like a like a uh, kind of Frodo vibe about him, so he's kind of like had to be. He's a bit older and a bit sort of like he looks a bit bit rougher than a Frodo. Halfling. Okay. Yeah, he's a halfling. He's a halfling that wanders up, and he's just kind of laughing, seeing Crumsby in this one sing, and he's like, 
Ah, oh, you, you lot sure know how to make life around here. This, you know this guy to be, uh, his name is Dougal Ninefingers. You've encountered him a few times because the two of you have a bit of a, a cat burglary rivalry going on. Cat. He's kind of known as the, um, like the go-to thief alongside fear for the society. What's his name? Uh, Dougal Ninefingers. <laughs> He's uh, like, oh, you lot know how to wrap it up about here, don't you? It's been so boring without this lot gone. So, yeah. Shame about Flisk. I actually quite liked him. He was a bit of a laugh. Shame to hear he's a bit of a Bit knob. of a traitor. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame, isn't it, really? And he kind of just rubs his nose a little bit. So, um, did you get any treasure while you were there, just out of curiosity? Did it look like we got no, any treasure? No, not really, actually. Was it any good? <sighs> boring history stuff, she'll know. Oh. Rubbish. That's no good, is it? Um, <laughs> do you, um, well, look, I'm going to be over at the table. If you fancy a game of cards, come over. Uh, all of you know that he cheats terribly at cards. <laughs> so playing cards with him is generally a bad idea. Like, any experienced members point new members to Dougal and say, oh, go play cards with him. So uh, you know that he's a bit of a scoundrel when it comes to that. Do you want to know how he lost his finger? <laughs> <laughs> Don't remind me. <laughs> I watched it all happen. <laughs> Are uh, you going to make this somehow into flirting? Yes. Then no. <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. It's been two weeks. Uh, you're still playing with your ball, aren't you? No, I'm cradling it. You're no, cradling I'm, it. I'm wandering around. <laughs> um, so approaching you is a kind <gasps> of... You want my uh, ball? Get away. <laughs> is a woman in breastplate armour, and you can see that she has... Uh, um, a holy symbol of a clenched fist like around her neck and she's you can see that she's got like she actually seems ridiculously geared up for this kind of place she's got like a mace on her belt and you know she got a small prayer book she approaches and she's like oh six i've heard about your recent adventures terrible I, you desecrated a sacred tomb i what? thought you were better than this no we merely explored she like puts her hands we on the hip we aggressively explored <laughs> you should I heard that there was some sort of body that you disturbed? Yes, yes. Quite dead. You should not disrespect the dead. This is terrible, Six. It's dead again, actually. Sorry, I kind he, of... He, he like, turns over. What? He disturbed us. What do you mean? Uh, you know that this woman is called uh, Lady Maribel de Lange. Uh, she's a cleric, and she's kind of a bit of a busybody that, like, tries to, like, protect tombs that people go into. Uh, Maribel de Lange. Um, but she's also a, quite a potent cleric, and so a lot of expeditions take her because she keeps them alive. Um, but she's kind of known for like being really mo motherly and inter like making sure that nobody disturbs things. What is this about? He was uh, disturbing you. He was undead. He is undead. Actually, I think I'm still a bit wounded. Maybe you could touch me. She's kind of got like a bit of a like a, a milfy vibe, actually. <laughs> so like she like she's like she looks over. <laughs> Did it touch you? Yeah. Have you been feeling sick? Right there. It hurts. This is really working for you, right is it? There. Give me a deception check. Or a it's persuasion, not persuasion not check. deceiving her. Persuasion check. Well, you kind of are. <laughs> She's had... You have been drinking, so I was going to give you disadvantage, but I'm not going to bother. She, like, looks at you and she's like, Ugh, oh, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should have more respect. It hurts inside. You are all terrible people. And she heads off in another direction. I love you. Fia, she's going to put thumbs up. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Um, so yeah, you guys have a bit of an R&R. &R. Um, drink is brought out. You are struggling. You're like, oh, <laughs> very... Stop dancing around, for Christ's sake. We haven't moved. What? Are you over there or are you over there? You I've might be over there. I can't I've stolen really his see. Cigar. I've stolen you're his out cigar. of the ashtray, you're yeah. just like... Oh. Great um, your cigar's gone missing. You know, oh, fuck, fuck this cigar, bloody hell, boy. <laughs> Jeez. Um, so as you guys are kind of getting settled, uh, maybe an hour goes by of just recovering a little bit. You know, you guys get some rest. Um, you know, this is kind of the, in for all intents and purposes, you getting your hit points back and getting some of your hit dice and things like that. Yeah. Um, if you hadn't already done that. The room suddenly begins to grow very cold and a wind blows throughout the plush interior of the society, sending sheafs of loose paper flying and blowing out the roaring fireplace. There's a few audible gasps and a few people of, what's going on? Um, and a swirling vortex of green energy cascades into existence in the very centre of the room. An emaciated body of a man in breastplate and plumed helm falls through this portal onto the thick rug. In his hands, he clutches a golden sphere stylized like the sun, and gold and gemstone and treasures fill his pockets to bursting. Ah, oh, 
Jolt! He barely manages to whisper, The lost city is in Jolt! And Jolt. with that, his eyes roll back into his head. And then there's a loud vibration and his body shakes violently. And then suddenly, from this portal, a cackling laughter <laughs> begins to echo. And you see through this portal, the kind of the frosted image of this portal begins to clear. And you see standing inside a room of dark stone, of stark stone covered in moss and splatters of blood. Uh, a skeletal figure in long tattered robes, a horned crown upon its disdained skull. And I think Sam might be able to throw up a picture of this skeletal figure oh. here. Uh, he stands in the portal itself. All the gold he could carry and none of it could help him. How sad. I learned he was a member of your little club, so I thought I would return him to you. There's plenty more treasure where he just came from. If you're brave enough. <laughs> and he just starts cackling behind it. Um, the man's body just lays in the middle of this room and you can see the gold is kind of beginning to eke out of his pockets. And all of the, there's about maybe uh, four kind of scholars plus Dougal, Qu uh, Qualian and Maribel who kind of all statter around it. Uh, Maribel is shocked. Um, and seems to like look up at this figure and you can see this kind of intense hatred and then her body kind of eyes fall down on the corpse itself. Um, what at this point would your guys' initial reactions be? Just tell me, like, it's not necessarily a, you know, if you'd like to take an action or do something, excuse me, you can, but just what are, you, what are your instant reactions to this? Straight for the sphere. Looks historical. What? Straight for the pockets. It's straight for the pockets of oh. gold and gem. Same with you. I am stepping back into the shadow with my hood up and just observing. Observing. Okay. I'm actually keeping an eye on Nine Fingers as well, though. Okay, so you're going to try and do that. So I'm, I'm like looking at the gold and then looking at him. Looking at okay, which one? Give me a fifty. Which one's your got your more attention? Gold. gold. Okay. So on that point, let's roll some initiative. <laughs> and I'm going to need some space on the table, so you're going to have to pick up your dice. Okay. And you're going to have to move your drink beverages. Oh. Did I not have a thing about initiative? Basically, Kim's gonna um, have to move all of the stuff. I'm yeah, hungry. Jesus Christ. I'm a thirsty girl. <laughs> Why do you have three drinks? I'm a thirsty girl. So, Queen, Google, oh, Maribel. One, go. two, three, four. So, uh, the body, by the way, I should point out, uh, is this guy, and the portal kind of appears. So, he's down on the ground. Um, one, two, three, four random, like, kind of scholarly looking figures. Um, Maribel was here, Dougal was here, and then this guy, Qualian, was right next to the body. So if you would like to place your guys, now you guys are uh, kind of scattered around. Um, you probably wouldn't be super close to the body because it was right in the middle, but feel free to guys place you guys wherever you think Where would be the most sense. So the fireplace, all the brandy and cigar was all around the fireplace. So you guys can be around there. Um, <laughs> can't do it. That way. <laughs> you want to basically be here? Yes. Okay. So I'll say if Kato was there, you're about there actually. Um, so this body kind of lands in the middle and three of you instantly rush. At the same time, Dougal also makes a dad mad rush, so do many of the other scholars. Um, and you can see Qualian begin to kind of try and gesture with an arcane spell. So, uh, let me just get a piece of paper spare so that I can write some initiatives down. Now, if I was a more prepared DM, I probably would have had this pre-done. <laughs> so, right. So, Ugh. initiative. And I've got to remember all your different names now. So we have Six, mm -hmm. Fia, Kayla, Cromsby. And then I've got Dougal, Qualian, uh, Maribel doesn't need to go, and then the Greedy Scholars. So, Six, initiative please. Ten. Fia. Ten. Kayla. Six, Cromsby. Fifteen. Fifteen. Cromsby is well on it. Oh. Uh, seven plus. Even for a pisshead. Four, eleven. <laughs> yeah, that's because you're playing <laughs> drunk and you're still at. Oh yeah, good point. <laughs> <laughs> Taking the hard stuff. Oh, maybe I got 
one. So uh, while you are drunk, I'm going to say you have disadvantage on any skill checks that require some element of dexterity or uh, wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, you're fine. Um, um, uh, you know, but there we go. So you, Cromsby, despite your drunken state, you see that glittering or your favourite thing in the whole world and you want it. And you can see he's got this golden sphere, it's probably about the size of an apple, mm -hmm. um, like a good app like large apple in his hands, but his pockets are literally like spilling with gold and gemstones and you can see small figurines um, and they seem to be in his pockets. What would you like to go for? You dashed forward first. Uh, I'll go for the pockets. You're going to go for the pockets? Yeah. Okay, give me an investigation check. Just to see how much you can kind of grab with straight disadvantage. Away. Uh, so an investigation check is an intelligence check. So I'm going to say no because you're kind of like just patting his pockets to see what's there. There's no physical dexterity required. Nineteen. Nineteen. So there's a couple of things actually. So while you're digging through his pockets, you've got enough time to either grab um, like a handful of gold. You can grab uh, two rubies that you can see. There's also a sapphire. You could grab a ruby and a sapphire or, you know, two rubies. Um, there's also two golden skeleton statues, uh, which you find just like eking in one of his inside pockets. They're kind of, you know, like action figure size, but they look very skeletal. But you can also see there's a couple of other things. There is a silver necklace with what appears to be talons, like almost like animal talons, like being strung to it, which he's actually got hidden inside a, an inside pocket that was kind of hard to see before. And there's also a small journal tucked into his waistband, which was very hidden. Can I take a ruby and the necklace? Uh, I'm going to say because it's on the inside. No, you've only got time to grab the necklace. If that's what you want to take, you've got time to grab right, that. I'll get, I'll get the necklace. So you like dive and you like pull this necklace free, and you're like, ah, and you've got that. So you grab that, uh, and that is going to be your action for this one. Uh, so after that, you see the the mage looks over and he gestures with a quick kind of gesture of his hand, and the apple golden sphere in his hand rolls towards him and then flies up into his hand. He's like, oh, marvelous! Oh, this must be full of treasures. <laughs> And he seems very pleased with himself. Um, Dougal goes next. He kind of sprints over and he like looks over at Crumsby and he's like, oh, Crumsby, you got the, he's like, you, know, you got there first. But he just dives in and he grabs two of the rubies and he's just like, oh, look at these babies. And he just holds them up. Oh, I saw one first, you little bastard. Oh, piss off, old man. These are mine. Oh. So, <laughs> a rump. <laughs> a rump. Six and fear. You guys can decide between you who goes. I'm mostly going to be um, looking around, okay, and then placing my ball in this plant pot. Okay, you secrete, sure. you secrete the thing. Give me a perception check. Okay. Fourteen plus five, so nineteen. Okay, the you see the portal still open, and the skeletal figure is just kind of. He's like clacking his bone fingers together. You can't tell if he's smiling, but he's just like nodding enthusiastically, watching everybody scrabble over the gold. Um, behind him, there's definitely the room he's in, there's blood patterns, there's these kind of dark stone with moss. You get the sense that wherever it is, it's probably quite humid. But also, there's passages leading off it. And you're pretty sure you can hear screams coming from these different passages. Like it's almost like being reverberated through the portal, but your cat like ears, you pick up that there is like very human sounding screams coming from behind him. Uh, you secrete your ball, that's your action. Fear. Uh, you dive towards the body, didn't you? So. I said I looked at it. But, oh, okay, do you, um, do you not want to? Because you said you were going to go after the gold when yeah, I first asked you. At the gold. Okay. Um, you could do something else if you'd like. Where's the, like where, holding, sorry, where's the portal? Uh, it's kind of in the middle, but it's kind of hovering okay. in the air. So it's uh, right above the body, effectively. Yeah, I want to go and grab as much gold as I can. Okay. And then uh, get away from the portal again. Okay, so you've got so. 20 feet, so you go in. So you want to grab a handful of gold, right? Yes. Physical gold coins. Yeah, physical coins. Okay. Uh, why don't you roll for me 2d10? You grab about 120 gold's worth, you kind of scoop it up, you stuff it into your shirt, and then you're going to bounce about where... Can I use a dash to oh, get Oh, you could. So you've got 10 feet more of movement, so where would you like to go with your 10 feet? Like... Um, actually, I think I want to go back to where I was, okay. sort of near, near 
So you kind of tip off on the table, um, and then you want to dash, yeah? I want to dash back again. So where, how, you move yourself because you've got loads of movement. I, so. had, uh, I just want to kind of go back to where I was actually. Okay, so you move all the way back Drop there. The Perfect. Um, Kayla, what would you like to do? How much did, You wanted to dash for stuff as well, yeah? That guy has the orb. The wizard guy has the orb, yeah. And he's, yeah. Like, he's like holding it up. He's not being very careful. He's just kind of like, oh, look how fabulous. Because it looks super historical. Yeah. It looks, in fact, actually, when you give me a history check, quite real quick, I'm going to say on the 19 20. of a roll, 20, you recognize the symbol. In the tomb of Atan, where you guys fought the mummy um, and the staff was, you remember that set into the ceiling was a bronze visage of the sun. This sphere perfectly matches that bronze uh, sphere you saw in the tomb. The same metchings, the same markings, somehow that is connected to what was in the tomb. Can I like just charge at him to take the like tackle him and like, like try tackle him and snatch the orb? it? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like, clothesline style. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, boom! Uh, you'll probably either have to try and shove Dougal out of the way. Quite easy. He's quite small. Or jump over him. What would you like to do? Show it'd be strength, wouldn't it? Yeah. I'm gonna strength him. So you're just gonna strength him out of the way? Sure. Give me a uh, strength check. I'm gonna give disadvantage. <laughs> you just send Dougal flying. He's like, I got these rubber boots! <laughs> and he gets flown out of the way. Uh, he's actually thrown onto the table, which kind of knocks it up, and like the drinks get spilt on him and everything else. And then you plow into Qualian. What I'd like you to do is make me an unarmed attack roll. So attack as if you were using your weapon. Um, so you add the same bonus. Uh, 21. Yep, that's gonna hit him. Um, and then you're gonna give me a strength check as opposed by his uh, strength. Oh, yeah. That's 24. Good. Okay, you just grab his, like, what do you want to do? Like, grab his wrist and yank it out of his hands or just, like, throw him to Close the ground? Line. So you just, like, poof, poof, he just crumples. He's like, okay, oh, <laughs> and then just bam on the ground. The orb stumbles and you grab it. Can I say sorry? <laughs> you just say sorry, yeah, and you, like, snatch this orb up, right, as he grabs it. And he's like, <coughs> I'm going to get you for that. Uh, as he just kind of chokes through. Um, a bunch of the scholars now jump in. So one, two, he's going to go for gold. She's going to go for gold. Um, but these two are actually, they've seen the way that you reacted to the orb. And they're kind of looking and thinking like, there's going to be something about that orb. Um, and they're going to both try and come at the sides of you. And they're going to try and both wrestle you. Qualian's um, kind of knocked on his ass. I'm drunk and angry. Um, so these two are going to fly in. Uh, they're going to try and, what's your AC for me, please? Fifteen. 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 Okay. My. So both of them managed to get a grip on you, but you're going to give me two strength checks now. I'm going to give myself advantage to just represent both of them. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> natural one and one. Okay. So uh, natural um, one. Is that what two natural ones you? Are? Oh, you just roll a natural one. Yeah. So okay. natural one. Natural so one. So you're going to fail seven, that. Yeah. It's going to be a fail. Uh, eleven. Oh, sorry. I had advantage, not you. No, but you said make two strength checks. Oh, yes, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you rush in, and the two of them combined, you're like a bit drunk, you're not expecting it, and they manage to grapple onto you, and you're currently wrestling. They've got their hands on the apple, and you're wrestling with them for it. They haven't like, yanked it off you yet, but the two of them combined have got firm grip on you. You can't move, you're currently being grappled. Um, and they're kind of latched onto you, and there's two of them like hanging off your big burly arms, like, get it off her! No, you get it off her! And they're kind of arguing with each other about boys, who should get it. Boys, boys, boys! You both can get me off! <laughs> so, Crumsby. Uh, there is still treasure to be had, you can see it. Gold, golden figures. At least another that, ruby. That, that Dougal who yes. has the sapphires. Yep. Can I go over to him and pinch them off him? You can try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do you want to try and take them off him? By force, or do you want to try and like steal them away? Like, how do you want to do it? By force. Do you want to like pissed? Would you, okay. Would you, I was going to say, or do you want to like magic spell him to give them to you or anything like that? No, yeah. no you're I'm just going to drunk for that. Just like, boy. give me those. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you're going to walk up to him. So like that. This, this is wonderful like, society. It's just devolved into a bar fight. Why? Because there's like there's this good. Oh, like, it's like yeah. Imagine somebody with like a million pounds dropped into like you know a club. I think a few people would get a bit rowdy, especially drunken barbarians. <laughs> um, so you're gonna give me a uh, give me a attack roll as if you're making a punch. So you're using a melee weapon. So what have you got there? Rapier. Got rapier. Yeah. 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 Uh, right, this is it. I've got to try and find what fucking dice is uh, Nope, so d20 first. Oh, I know you've oh, not yeah, played in a while, you've got a roll to hit. Shit, yeah. 
See, long okay, time. thirteen. Yep, you're gonna. So you get a, a growl. You like grab his shirt and lift him up. Now you're gonna give me a strength check. So just a straight d twenty roll plus your strength. Uh, eight. Eight. That's actually still enough. Like he's very. He's not physically strong. He's this tiny little halfling. Um, I'll give him this advantage actually. Um, yeah, it's still more than enough. You kind of like. He's like uh, a bit blurry from me. He's like, what are you? Get off me! And then you're just like, I'll have these blinders keepers, my boy. <laughs> yeah. And you just snatch both of these rubies out of his hands, basically. Uh, okay, so that is Sir Crumsby's go. Uh, Colin, the elf, is kind of like startled, but he looks up at Kalar. He's just like, you, you, you uncouth barbarian! How dare you! How dare you! Um, yeah. uh, and he's cast a spell. Uh, you need to give me a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> Ooh. 15. 15. You feel like this magic trying to hold you in place and freeze you, but you're kind of like, nah, I'm too drunk for this. <laughs> you just kind of throw it off. He's like, boom, blast. Um, and so he's like, <laughs> weaving his little spells. Nice. He doesn't actually get up either. He actually crawls under the table um, and he's like, <laughs> like, like bugger off, egghead. <laughs> So you say that, he's just like, uh, uh, he's just like, you miserable intellectual, unintellectual beast. I'm actually very clever, thank you. I speak more languages than you. A pig is clever to a horse. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> uh, Dougal is with you. He's just like, yeah, find us keepers. Uh, and he is going to, give me a uh, quick perception check. Oh, natural 20. Okay, uh, so you just catch him. Um, he He's like, okay, find his keepers. And then he goes to like get up and walk past you. But you can feel him literally like dive in and try and grab your coin purse. And you like catch his hand and throw him off. And he's like, ah, fuck. And he just kind of stumbles back as you catch him from trying to thieve off of you, basically. Um, and he's going to get up and stumble in this way. Got to be a bit quicker than that, me lad. For a drunk old bastard, you're pretty sharp. Uh, six and fear, what would you guys like to do? Excuse me, fear. I'm going to 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Can mm -hmm. I peek into the portal? So what, you want to stick your head in no, or you just want to just look peek into. in? Yeah, so you peek in and as you do, the skeletal figure almost seems to like move extremely quickly and he kind of appears right in front of your face. <laughs> ah, welcome, friend. Are you interested in what is behind me? Yes, very. Tell me more. Uh, come to the jungle and you'll find out. <laughs> Church? Is and that then the he, name of it? He just starts laughing and then the portal actually closes. Very annoying. Very annoying. Uh, so that's what you do? Yes. Okay, fear. Oh, You're watching forget. this madness. You just like dive in. Yeah. Snatch, snatch, snatch. I don't care right away. Talking with all those guys. Okay. Sure. What do you want? Coins? There's uh, two gemstones remaining or the gold figurines? I'm going to go for the gemstones this time. Okay, you just snatch those up. Nobody else yep. has grabbed those. Um, it looks like the scholars went for the. Actually, sorry. With the scholars, actually, one went for figurines and one went for gold. So um, the gemstones were still there. Uh, so you guys have got those. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is these two scholars that dived in, they back off. Um, and they basically just go, okay guys, I don't want to fight, I've, I've got gold, we can all have a little bit of something. And there's a woman on the other side who's just like, yep, I've got enough for me, that funds my next expedition. Let's let Maribel attend to the dead guy. And they're kind of like holding their hands out, trying to calm the situation. Oh, but, oh let me attend to the dead guy. Uh, six? Uh, can you heal him or something or? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Mar Maribel looks at you as just like with a disproving look um, as they do that. Oh, Kalar, sorry, it's your go as well. What, what are these guys doing? They're, they're like, they're literally grasping you. You can't move currently. You're being grappled by these guys. Um, and they've got their hands on the orb. If I rage, <laughs> would that help? I would say you have advantage on pretty much anything you want to do in this situation. I would like to rage. <laughs> the, the barbarian rage. I'm heartbroken. Okay. They're taking my arm. Okay. Like, yeah. So what do you want to do in this rage? Are you going to punch them or are you going to like? I just want to throw, throw them. Off. them. I don't want to hurt them. There is. Them. You I know that wanna... these are bay windows. Uh, you could probably walk them and throw them out the window. So what? Both of them at the same time? Is, the, is there bushes and stuff or a pond? Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, not. A, it's yeah, a soft it's a, landing. It's a bushes. There will be a soft landing. Them. Yeah, they'll get a bit hurt, but enough that it will teach them a lesson. Not brain damage. No. So when you give me a strength check with advantage. See what you get. Six. 
16 plus 6 is 24. Okay. No, 22. 22. Okay, so you kind of drag these guys like, one on each arm. I uh, said no! One of them, you just like, and you throw him through, there's a great smash as he like goes flying out of the window, the curtains part way, you can see it's raining out on the cobbled streets. The other guy is like, and he just like rips his shirt and just like, so that like you lose the grip on him and then just backs off. He's just like, okay, Kayla, calm down. And like, everybody is now like holding their hands up, like, calm down, calm down. Dougal also backs off at this point and it's just like, all right, old man, you got me. Like, fair, fair play, fair play, you got your hands on them. Um, and even Quillian just like crawls out and he's like, now I think we've had enough of this madness, quite frankly. Uh, we should attend to the, the injured man. Um, at which point one of the other scholars is like, he's dead, Quillian. <laughs> he's not injured, he's dead. Uh, at which point, though, Maribel, this kind of lady in this armor, steps forward and is like, No, I will not let him die here. And she steps up um, and she places her hands on, on him and she makes a prayer to Torm, uh, a god of many things, uh, places her hands on him and she casts Revivifying. And nothing happens. She like looks down and she's like, No, this, this cannot be. His, his soul is gone. I, I can't. It should be here. I, I can't find it. And, and she like stuck his back and she just like, I can't raise him. And she seems very confused for a moment. Ah, what a waste. Think of the stories he has. He knows no, everything. you don't understand. His soul is not there. Something has taken it. You believe in souls? Of course. Uh, the divine planes is where our souls all ascend to. Uh. Ah, strange creature. You understand, of course. Uh, his soul is missing. Um, would I know anything in my kind of... Right now! Rawr! <laughs> 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 I'm just, I'm just staring at him. What would you like to do? He's got his nipple out. Yeah, he's just like... Mm. <laughs> Is it like a horny rage? Like, he's kind of backing off. Like, Is he cute? Let's roll. Let's, <laughs> let's see. Roll for cuteness. Uh, what's the best way of doing this? Percentiles? Yeah. Like percentage cute? 73% cute. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. He's kind of got like, you know, a good windswept I'm, hair, I'm he's pretty on. well, pretty well built. I'm you know, dribbling. he's a tail adventure. He's like backing up, he's like advancing <laughs> on him and he's just like, <laughs> no, please, can someone calm <laughs> Kayla down? I'm going to be the Scarlet your answer to the whole time. <laughs> yeah. uh, can I, are we out of initiative? Yeah, you guys are now out of initiative. Can I walk near Kayla? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is my trick to get her out of the rage, the horny rage, <laughs> the worst kind. They say my name is Rage Horn. <laughs> you want to know how? <laughs> I know how. I'm going to walk over and then mage hand slap her in the face. What? <laughs> okay. Snap out of it, Kayla, you so this bitch. What does your <laughs> what does your ghostly hand look like? It's a paw. It's like a big paw, like a big <laughs> kitty paw. It's a big kitty paw. Boom! <laughs> it just kinda of, it's not very hard, it's not very strong. It just kind of it's like a around the face. What Stop now looking six? at six. Cover your nipple, man. For your life. <laughs> <laughs> he literally like pulls off a tablecloth and like drapes it over him like a dress. I had to convince her to not touch my six nipples. <laughs> Took years. I He's like, I don't need that mental image. Um, <laughs> and yeah, he just kind of backs off. But at this point, so you guys got whatever treasure. Uh, the servants kind of actually bust in with a few of the guards and the bouncers, and they say, you know, the, you see this matron who's like, I shall attend to the body. The funds shall go to repairing, and he gestures to the window and the broken tables. <laughs> the rest of the historical society. You may keep whatever you have already. And he drags the body away. Uh, Maribel goes with it. Um, and the rest are all kind of left looking a bit absurd. So you got uh, two rubies and, a, uh, and the, 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 the necklace. silver necklace. Yeah. You got 120 gold, a sapphire, and a ruby. Uh, the rubies, I will tell you now, are worth because I'm sure that this is what you're most interested in. The rubies are worth 200 gold each, and the sapphire is 100 gold. The necklace... You don't know if you could give it an, an immediate estimate. Um, you sense there might actually be some magic about this thing. Oh, but okay. you'll need to get somebody to tell you a bit more about it. Um, so there you go. Um, there you go. Uh, everything calms down. Things are cleaned away. The other scholars all just get lost, basically. They kind of make their way to their rooms and things I'm like that. There's no way that that one would be like, if you change your mind, you it's know just I like, am. He like looks at you up and down, he's like, mm, and then he <laughs> seems to go off and he needs to think about it, so he just kind of makes his way over. Um, and yeah, you guys are basically given a free... Where did the body go? Uh, yeah, they've taken I... it away, the, the major the major oh, deal. Kayla, there. you made me miss the body. You could have had important information on it. You can still follow them. Where yeah. did it go? Uh, they've just gone out into the back rooms, but yeah, you could probably ask to see the body. 
going to track it down. Okay, yeah, you find the mater and he's Stop just everything. like, Mr. Six, how can I help you? The body, I want to look at it. Uh, just look? Yes. Very well. Come Devour with it me. for information. Mm, very well. <laughs> Come with me. Do any of your companions wish to attend? Probably not. Yes. Very. Uh, I heard a yes and no. You hear it like, <laughs> yes! Um, but she's so, kind of so drunk. You two want to come fine. and look at the body. What do you two want to do? Is there any gold left in the room? <clears throat> Maybe some like spill Or like one of the statues. Did they drop one of them? There is four gold on the floor. I take it. <laughs> <laughs> That's mine, thank you. Yep. I'm going to go with you just to, to observe, of course, not to look for anything else on the body. No, not anything. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. Crumsby, you can search. My you're body. not feeling great. No. I will. Uh, I will tag along as best as I can. <sighs> but oh, man, I, you should go to sleep. Sleep, you sleep, should. my boy, my God! I still have. Oh bloody hell, my kidneys! <laughs> uh, right. No, come on. I I've, I've got some strength in the old pucker yet. Come on, off we go. In the what? Okay. In the pucker. <laughs> So, uh, you guys are led through a series of back doors. Uh, you go through various things like hallways that lead off into library rooms, and um, back through kitchens and things like that. And they've actually taken the body out to what appears to be some sort of laboratory. It's kind of like set up for like analysis of plants and things like that. But the body's actually been placed on this kind of slab. And Maribel and a kind of thin, gaunt looking man are kind of examining, examining it quite carefully. Um, you can overhear Maribel kind of saying the same things like, I do not understand, it, it's nowhere, it's not trapped, uh, it's, not, uh, he, it's not that he refuses to return, it is not there. And uh, you hear this very sort of like, that is quite disturbing, um, from this kind of gravelly, sort of elderly, wizened looking character. Um, the Mater D kind of walks you in, he's just like, they wish to see the body, my lord. He's just like, very well, bring them. Uh, I... I'm Lord Greymane, and I am the creator of the Historical Society. I am quite perplexed by what has occurred here. The portal is quite strange. This is fascinating. Are you aware of the figure that was displayed in the visage? Uh, you can make arcana checks. Oh, no. Fifteen. Eleven. Would I know stuff though, Ten. you know, with the like historical 13. knowledge? Not necessarily with history, 13. What did you get? Is that one? Kimmy? 11. 11. Crumsby, you're probably the best one to know. You've been around a while, you're a dwarf, older fellow, um, live a long time. Um, you've heard legends of crazy wizards who, like necromancers especially, who through some weird ritual that requires insane amounts of money and time and research and it's all dark forbidden magic, can basically make themselves immortal, but they kind of become undead, and it's called a lich. Incredibly powerful necromancers, uh, wizards, um, very hard to kill as well. Um, and based on what you saw in the portal, just briefly, kind of you suspect it's probably one of them. Um, and uh, the, the, the grey man looks at you, he's just like, yes, there's a Cromsby. I believe has the same look as I do. This creature, a lich, powerful wizard, who has imbued himself with necrotic energies. Yeah, you see, you don't need to be reading books all day to get a few bits of information in the old brain. I was in a tomb for two weeks. I think you can call that not in a book. I am that quite is. disturbed by the presence. His ability to conjure a portal here in Waterdeep is discerning. The portal was fascinating. I loved its swirls. Yes. I wonder where it came from. Chult, he says. Yes, the man spoke of Chult, a jungle region oh. far to the south Tropical. west <laughs> of the Sword Coast. I know that there is a port there full of ruffians and pirates mm. and strange lizards. Lizard Would phone. you wish to examine the body? Father? Yes, yes, right away. Please. Maribel has concluded that its soul has long departed. If you believe in such. I cannot find any cause of death, however. But please. Any gestures to it? What would you like to do? I'm going to skull cup to it. S skull cup to it? Yeah. 
I want to look around the room while he does it. I really closely <laughs> look things. at it. It's like glass. You can see like weird, like shriveled up animals yeah. in like fluids. I'm gonna be like plants. Tapping the glass and everything. Um, I'm looking a little bit disgusted. Uh, as you tap on it, its eye opens and looks at you, uh, and you can see its, its brain is kind of showing. Um, how close are you to the? Are you tapping it, or do you back off? Are you still quite close? No, I'm still. I'm fascinated. I'm oddly fascinated. You just hear in your mind. Release me. Ah, oh. uh, Frisk. What are you doing, Frisky? What are you doing? I'm observing this, okay. uh, like a child has just got a new playset. Okay. <laughs> like, ah, oh, mm, fascinating. Yes. The body's like very gaunt, like a lot of the life has been sucked out of it, like the eyes are sunken, but you, the, the body still has like some semblance of um, probably, you know, it wasn't completely sucked dry of moisture. <laughs> Chalk him. If you consider Not the, the cause of death, it's death like by being thrown out of a portal. I have not considered, but in my Or dehydration. Practice, I considered, but he shows no other signs of dehydration. My best guess is some sort of magic. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to close my working eye. Yes. And and, or you want to use your detect magic on him? Yeah. Okay. He, as you do, there's some faint magic around the rest of the room, just like obviously maybe some experiments and things like that, but the body just is thick with necrom necromancy. Ah, uh, his his life force has been drained away. You also notice, you also yeah. spot that there is uh, a necklace Cromsby has placed in a pocket begins to glow and pulse with energy. Mm. I whip around like a cat. Cat-like agility. Because I am one. <laughs> that, that thing. I'm going really close to Cromsby. Give me that, give me that. Well, well, personal space, my boy. Necklace. <laughs> Something glowy. Give it. What? There's something glowy on you. Good luck getting out off of him. If it's worth any value, he ain't giving it up. Something historical, something ancient. No. Oh. Beautiful. You know, I he'll give you the it back when he's done with it. it, though. I want it back, all right? Yes, yes, you can whatever, sell it. But I want the story. I gingerly give you the S necklace. Silver necklace with like, almost like long, I'm gonna say raptor kind of like claws, like from Jurassic Park, like all hung off of it. This must be from Chalt as well. It looks Chaltian. Mm, I'm gonna inspect it. Okay. In some historical check. Okay. Yeah. Give me I'm a history check. Can I? Um, what would you like to do, Kevin? Rifle through the pockets. <laughs> yeah. It looks like they've been emptied quite quickly of any treasures, um, but you do find a journal actually. Yes, it's with a yeah. So you take this journal, like, ah, oh, yes, I was going to examine this. If you wouldn't mind, Miss Rachel, uh, share its information with us. Of course. Um, the, do you want to read it out loud or are you just going to flick through it and see what's in it? I flick through it while this guy's. Yep, yeah, okay. What history check? Eight. It, you guess it's probably from Cholt. Uh, it looks very tribal. It looks old, but not old, old. Like maybe a hundred years or so. Not, not that old. <sighs> yes, I know everything about him, but at a cost. Grumsby. Well, don't keep us in suspense, lad. What, 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 what is it? Maybe when you're sober. Um, you want to rifle through this journal? So this figure uh, that the body was, um, you get him, his name was Sir Gedwin Feiberg, um, and he was a member of the Flaming Fist Mercenaries, which is a mercenary company all through Faerun. Um, and you know that they have actually, the, the Flaming Fist have a, uh, uh, not quite an embassy, but like a, an encampment in uh, Chult, uh, near the port, uh, near a port, you can't remember its name. Um, but the, the journal actually describes how he's been sent there, he was on routine patrols, but um, out in the jungle he found something. And like the journal pages kind of get a bit abstract after that. He refers to endless tunnels, um, he refers to death traps. Several of his men have been killed um, in, in traps trying to find their way out. Um, he mentions that the doorway was shut behind him, some sort of portal maybe. Um, and he mentions a skeletal figure laughing at them, uh, appearing to taunt them and tease them and promise them freedom and treasure, um, but only to lead them into another death trap. Uh, eventually, he basically just, the last page is, I'm going to die here in this forbidden place. Um, I hope that no one ever comes here, basically. And it's just like, you know, that's it, basically. He, think, he thought he was going to die. Um, but it does not seem good. Do you read that to yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Thinking yeah, it read. sounds like my last relationship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And then I regale 
the group. Oh, this is fascinating. Well, you know what that means, don't you? Death traps, locked doors. Yes. Gold, treasure, obviously. History. Oh no, the architecture, the society that yeah. could have dwelled you know there. What it the stories, ancient civilizations. Yes. No, <sighs> you know what I mean. I do know what it, it means. I know it means that you're going to tell me to do something that you don't want to do. What? Well, I think after last time, when I let you two wrong, ragtag band go off and try and do something for me, what did you come back with? Empty bleeding pockets! And what did I have? Empty pockets from financing the bloody thing! And a broken heart. Um, yeah, right. A mind full of possibility. Yeah, yes. I learned so much about Atan and the staff. Yes, well, I think this time I'd better tag along, you know, make sure you, uh, don't get into as much trouble as last time. I would love to see that. Ah, Probably. well, good. I'll show you how yes. it's done, all right? <laughs> You're a slow, alcohol-soaked meatbag. What well, possible value do you provide our excursion? How dare you, me boy? For that, well, I'm too drunk to think about it, but... Can I, can I have his cut of the treasure? Yes, you'll get a cut of the treasure. No, his cut. His cut? Oh, as yes, of course. for him, of course. Fine, fine. Can yeah. I have your cut of the treasure? No. <laughs> um, at this point, Lord Greymane is like, mm, You have given me much to think about. Uh, I'm afraid that after the escapades in the foyer, I must rescind your rooms for at least one evening. I have done the same to the others. Make sure equal treatment. It will be for only two days. Uh, you may return. Your identifications will be returned to you. Uh, there is a good inn that I can recommend. A few roads down, good prices. A friend of mine works there. You understand, of course, I cannot allow such frivolity and, and recklessness within the establishment. This is outrageous. My family has been a part of this society for generations. Yes, Sir Cromsby, I am well aware. Your father would be very, I think, disappointed in the ruination of the tapestries that he personally provided to this place no. and the ruckus. But Just your things. I am more than willing, more than willing, to allow you back entry after providing this very intriguing mystery to the historical society. The others will have a more longer punishment. Uh, shall we say two weeks that they will not be allowed within the premises? Yes, six. My room. One request. Yes? Can I take my blanket? I've been working on needing it for three weeks now and I couldn't let it go. Um, I can have someone bring it to you. Thank you. Yes, And my well. basket. Yes. Thank you. Very well. I shall have this sent for you. Uh, I will bring it down into the lobby and you may collect your items there. Good day. He just kind of nods to you. What are you doing with the body? Uh, we shall provide it once we relocate Sir Gedwin's next of kin. We shall provide it to them for proper burial. Mm. The other, we will also take it to some of the more, more powerful temples within the city so it can be examined by them for this sole missing conundrum. Why do you laugh at me, half orc? She's yes. very, very drunk. I heard that you indulged in a flaming topo. Those drinks are quite potent. Not to me. Mm. It soothes my broken heart, though. I was addicted to them, and now I have this voice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, two days you may return. Good day. And um, seemingly kind of materialising from, like, outside, two quite burly-looking men kind of are, like... If you wouldn't mind, please, this way. Uh, we shall fetch your basket, Master Cat. Don't touch it too much. Just hold it by the corners. Mm. Well. He doesn't like it if you touch it. Yes. No, I've also marked it. P, you mean? <laughs> no, that's a dog thing, how dare you. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> they kind of back off. Um, your things are brought to the, the lobby uh, and basically wrapped up. You know, you got back your bags, any of your personal belongings are brought down to you, and you are basically kicked out of the society for a few days uh, as kind of a, a token punishment uh, for causing a ruckus. Um, the rain is falling hard in Waterdeep. Dark clouds covering the sky give it a dim appearance as the cobblestones fill with rivers of rainwater and the usually happy city folk dash between cover with unhappy faces. 
Waiting outside the iron fence underneath a parasol is a tiefling woman. Red-skinned, with dark hair that spills around her shoulders, she raises a hand to adjust the spectacles balancing on her nose before pulling her cloak tighter. As she sees you exiting, exiting the society, she begins to wave her free hand frantically. Um, and I think uh, Sam can pull up some NPC art of this one. Uh, this is Favour Sam, if, if he's got it. So she kind of looks like this. Um, and she's waving Ooh. her hand quite frantically. She's like, excuse, excuse me, uh, excuse me, Sir Crombsby and Associates, please, please, may I speak with you, please? My lady, you seem in distress. May I help? Oh, yes, I, all of you, um, really, uh, uh, it's quite rainy. You're getting quite wet. Um, there's a little cafe here. Should, should we just pop inside? Just to, I need to speak with you all. Uh, Immediately. Oh, she, Immediately. She's like, oh, please, come on. And she like holds the parasol out for you. <gasps> And like she Kinda gestures you with manners. into this um, quite quaint little cafe, kind of like niched on the corner. Uh, there's like little tables set around. It's quite busy. People are trying to get out the rain. But you can smell kind of like hot teas and coffees from uh, Kalam Shan. Um, loads of different things being served. Um, she kind of finds a table, seemingly that there's one empty, um, and you all kind of nestle around it. And she's like, "I'm so sorry for disturbing you at the society. I, I know that you probably all have very important business, um, but my my mistress sent me specifically to." find you all. She, she urgently would love to speak with you. Um, sorry, sorry, and she adjusts her glasses again. My, my manners. My name is Favour. Um, I work for, uh, for, for a Lady V. I don't know if you've heard of her. She's, she's one of the nobility. Would we have heard of her? Why don't you just give me a intelligence check, everybody. Uh, Fear, you're quite near to the ground, and so is Cromsey. You know nobility. You guys can have advantage on this. What was it, sorry? Uh, intelligence. Just intelligence. Just pure, straight up intelligence. I know nothing. Ten. Ten. With advantage? Oh. You guys, because you know oh, yeah. a little bit about ten. nobility. <laughs> uh, yes, <Yeah>. ten. <laughs> uh, Fourteen. Fourteen? Eighteen. Eighteen. Um, most of you don't really know Frisk Six. You actually have heard of this woman. She's kind of known... She's very mysterious. She kind of stays in her manor house, which is at the top of a hill just outside the city that overlooks the, the city and, and the graveyard district. Um, which is quite beautiful. It's kind of a sight of Waterdeep, this mm -hmm. kind of beautiful graveyard full of tombstones and things. Um, and she lives in this huge manor house. She's a little bit reclusive. She used to be an adventurer, um, but she kind of became, came out of that life maybe, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Um, but she was renowned to have magical knowledge. That's probably why you've heard of her. She actually knows a little bit about magic and, and you know, magical history and magic items and things like that. Um, so you kind of know a little bit about her. Um, yes, uh, my, my lady sent me because... Well, she's heard about the uh, the incident in Callum Shan that some of you went through, and, and so comes to me you funded. Um, she 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 happens to know a few things uh, around the city, um, and she would desperately love to speak to you about it. Um, if you wouldn't mind meeting with her, that is. Um, I'm sure she'll she'll. Uh, uh, I'm I'm told that the she she simply said that it was it was uh, an offer you wouldn't want to miss. Is there money involved? Most likely, I'm afraid. I don't know. Then why didn't you say that earlier? Come on, let's get a move on. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, the meatbag is quite drunk. Uh, well, uh, but if, he, if you're willing to come, that's marvellous. I'm yes. willing. Just because this one's a bit too frightened of a bit of water coming from the sky. Oh, oh. <laughs> you don't understand. In big bodies, it can kill you. Well, yes. No, no, I'll, I'll hire a carriage. I'll get a carriage for us to pick us up here. You can wait here, I'll go get a carriage, and it'll take us straight there. Is there any water on me now? No. Is there any on my tail? Maybe. Oh my god. Auntie Baby kind of like snuggled up next to Favour, just uh, like... She's just like, oh, yes, oh, um, well, I'll go get the carriage then. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, good, You're yes. You're going to have to squeeze past me, though. <laughs> she's like, oh, excuse me, and she's oh, like trying oh. to squeeze past me. Um, she, uh, her le leggings are quite tight. She's wearing sort of like very, like, riding trousers almost. Mm -hmm. um, tall boots and things like that. And yeah, like, she skeets over your thighs, um, like, <laughs> Yes, um, oh, heavenly. and just like squeeze, oh, oh, well, sorry about that, uh, I'll, I'll be back in a moment, and she kind of like nervously dashes off. Um, about five minutes later, she kind of pokes her head in, hair kind of thick, wet with uh, water, and she's just like, it's here, come on, come on. Ugh, don't move your hand that much, you'll flick water everywhere. She hands you the parasol. To, I want to point to a bit of his tail and be like, there's water on that bit. Oh my that god. Bit. And see if you just like spin around a little bit to try and find I'm it. I'm gonna shake violently. <laughs> you, uh, this, uh, this like noble looking um, half elf is like, my god, sir! <laughs> exactly, <laughs> water everywhere! Oh, uh, tabaxi! <laughs> and just kind of shakes his hand at you. I um, think I'm in love. <laughs> Again! Mm. Look at her, she's divine. 
Which one? The man? Fair. Oh, the tiefling. Mm. Right. So you guys head inside the carriage, right? You make your way. The carriage thunders across the rain-slicked cobbles of Waterdeep. Districts race past and the roads are clear, but occasionally you spend time lounging in traffic waiting for the merchant wagons and city folk to pass, uh, giving an ample time for Phalar to ogle more at favour. Kayla. 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 Favour and Kayla. It's a ship name. Yeah, it's a hey! ship name. Uh, uh, kind of eyeing up uh, Favour, who awkwardly is like smiling. Is like, mm -hmm. I'm trying all my best to pick up on uh, She's so. She's like... She's responsive, but she's like very abashed, and she kind of like like faces down. She's like, "Oh, that's so funny," and she tries to play it off as jokes, and you can see her tail kind of swishing a little bit. Um, and she's like, <laughs> <laughs> and she like pulls her book out, and she like pretends to start reading a book and things like that. I uh, just um some uh, just some treaties on them. Uh, the the treaties. Fascinating. Anything yeah. historical? A, a little bit. It's um, more about the merchant princes of Kalimshan, but um. Can I help? No, no, it's I have fine. a very good tongue when it comes to languages. Uh, and at this point, I'm going to continue because Mark's feeling a bit awkward. <laughs> <laughs> um, this carries on. That's for, literally what I want to be the whole this character. Time. I just yeah. want to like, you know, push this as far as I can. The, uh, it's like every day, Kim. Basically, yeah. yeah. The carriage eventually leaves the bustling city centre and emerges onto quieter roads leading to the great, to the city outskirts. The path turns off and the carriage uh, winds its way around the impressive graveyard district of Waterdeep, where burial mounds and mausoleums protrude from the earth. At the top of a hill, looking out on the city, its twinkling lights and magical towers lit up from uh, beneath as the moon and stars shine down from above. It's a grand manor house and vast estate. Guards in thick cloaks with crossbows and curved sabers patrol the grounds with guard dogs. The carriage pulls up outside, and a footman dressed in impeccable clothing leads you to the front door and beyond into a grand hallway and stairwell of marble. Uh, Favour leads you down uh, several corridors and to a sort of door, and then she turns to you and she's like, um, I, I'm sorry I didn't mention this before, but I, the lady really wanted to speak with you. I just ask, please don't be alarmed by her appearance. I'm sure she'll explain it when you speak to her, um, if that's all right. And then she opens the door and gestures you to follow. I'm assuming you do so. The parlour is rich and lavish room, laden with thick rugs, cushions, long chairs, and surrounded with bookcases. A large, sturdy oak table stands at the far end with a relief map of Faerun itself. Sat upon a lounge chair like a chaise long, reading a book in a long and elegant white satin dress with full-length gloves and stockings is a, woman, is a woman. Her face is covered by a thick white veil and a wide, white-brimmed hat rests upon her head. She gestures you forward to sit at a series of armchair uh, before her. Um, and she's like, thank you so much for coming to see me. I hope that Favour did not find you at an unpleasant time. She did. Ah, uh, yes. As it was raining. Oh, my apologies, Mr. Uh, do you prefer Six or Mr. Flames? Six is good, but Flames can work too. Ah, very well. Um, my name is Lady V. Please forgive the theatrics, the nature of my... Um, Business is very much an information, and there are many in the city who would wish me harm uh, if they learnt of my true name. Um, my work with the Masked Lords is quite important, I'm afraid. I've brought you here because I have recently learned of your escapades in the desert um, with a certain Alaskalar Flisk uh, and the Tomb <laughs> of Tratan. Yes, I heard that he did... Uh, Quite that nefarious deeds. The staff in particular is what I wanted to speak with you about. Oh, please do. As what well do you as know? well the incident in the historical society tonight, my agents, shall we call them, have informed me of what happened. The orb that you picked up, uh, Miss Ragehorn excuse me. <laughs> that wasn't the character. Uh, Miss Ragehorn, the orb you found. Did you notice anything unusual about it? It, you noticed it matched the tomb, yeah? Uh, I noticed that it matched the tomb where Flisk stole my heart. And more than that, it matches the staff that Flisk required. The staff is uh, the staff of Napka, a queen of ancient Omu. The staff is said uh, wait, to lead to the forgotten wait, let city. let me write this down. Yes, please. Some crucial information. Staff of Napka? Yes. Um, it is said to lead its way to the ancient city of Omu in, uh, and based on the events of the society, 
I am beginning to believe that Chult and Omu may be at least related, if not Omu may be located there. Oh, Omu. The reason I bring this up is there is something happening in Toril that even its most powerful mages and clerics cannot explain. Something called a death curse has descended upon the world. Those who die cannot be resurrected. Their souls cannot be found. More than that, and I apologize for the appearance, but I trust that you will keep this to yourselves. And she unhooks the veil, and you can see that her actual flesh, she was probably a beautiful young woman at one point, or at least a middle-aged kind of woman, but her, her body is actually beginning to decay, and you can see part of her jaw is beginning to, like, the bones are beginning to show through, and you can see flesh peeling away. Um, I apologize for the disgusting appearance. Long ago, when I was an adventurer, I was killed. Uh, my friends, my good companions, brought me back to Waterdeep and paid for me to be raised by a temple. I gave up the adventuring life and returned to running nobility as I have done. When this death curse, and I, we do not know its exact origin, arrived, my body began to catch up with the years that had been gifted to me. The clerics tell me I have but 20 days before I die once more. And when I do, I cannot be brought back. Quite the conundrum, as you can imagine. Mm. Now, I work for a group called the Harpers. You may have heard of them. They are sometimes known as spies, but sometimes also known as um, champions of good in the world. The Harper agents and several magical assistants have determined that the location, the source of this plague, is coming from Cholt. And I believe, based on what we've seen, that it is in Omu itself. I need a group who have experience with what happened in the society, but also you proved yourself by surviving Laskalar's traitorous behavior. You know a little of the Omoan language, I believe, Miss Ragehorn. Miss Fear, capable of bypassing traps, and Mr. Flames, you have a knowledge of magical nature. I believe that your expertise will be most useful. And so Cromsby, aside from being quite affluent, I understand he was quite the explorer himself. Uh, I would very much like to hire you to locate the source of this plague, stop it. If you discover any treasures in Omu, you are welcome to keep them for yourselves, and I will pay you for stopping the source of this plague. My very life depends on it. I'm happy to uh, discuss a reasonable price that is not too unreasonable, but we'll do it for free. My lady, <coughs> I need no payment to save uh, your life so beautiful She's an uh, adult from the drink, uh, a, bit lady. Flesh, a bit of flesh peels off, and she's like, you are too kind, but I understand that that is Kayla, not my sense anymore. She's horribly disfigured, <clears throat> quite ugly for a human. Yes, I've you never seen anything like it in all me puff. Sorry, my lady. Beauty is on the inside as well as the outside. Really? I think you are radiant, my lady. Thank you, but I would be... I will feel more radiant when the curse is lifted, Miss Ragehorn. And I would do that for you. I would travel to the ends of the earth. <laughs> you are quite the charmer. I would also like to send Favour with you, and she gestures to the tiefling, and the Favour's like, Sorry! Sorry, what? Hello! I just heard that. <laughs> um, she's like, Favour, you have an understanding of Chaltean culture that I believe will be of a benefit, and your wizarding skills may be of use as well. Please accompany them as... Um, to keep an eye on things, if nothing else. She's like, no, I've never been outside to... What? And she seems quite flustered, and she holds up her hand to Lady V. Do you have any questions that I may be able to answer? Yes, Fia, please. Will Favor be taking a share? <laughs> I, will, I will pay Favor. You need not worry about treasure for her. Although, perhaps if you spend time with her, I'm sure Favor would... Any wizarding tomes, spell books, she would appreciate. And I'm sure that you will not find too much use for those. Well, it well, depends. I'm sure you can share them. Yes. I get them first, Favor. <laughs> She's like, okay, I don't even want to go! <laughs> I read them twice. And then... Once to skim, second to soak, and then you may have it. Fine, fine. Uh, I, she, I need to think about this, and she kind of backs off a little bit. Uh, is there anything else? Payment, would you like to discuss that now? Before you die, mm -hmm. we must discuss many things. You must have so much knowledge. 
I have some. I can provide you maps of Cholt from my adventuring yes, days. Yes, authentic ones. I also, written yes. Written by the, well, the locals. Cholt is a very large jungle country. Most of it is unexplored. The oh. jungle itself reams with undead. Uh, giant lizards called dinosaurs roam it as well, oh. and angry tribes of locals. Much of it hasn't been mapped, but I can compile what I know into a map for you. Such a map would be quite valuable of itself. What about the big one behind you of Faerun? That looks quite ancient. Uh, it is a wooden relief. I, I had it custom made. It's not. Oh, you had it made? Yes. Ugh, not interested. I'm afraid <laughs> so. I do have a contact in Chult, in Port Nianzang. Um, one of the merchant princes there, a woman named Jessamine. Uh, she will assist you in any way that you require supplies, providing help on locating information, um, anything you need. I also have already hired a ship, uh, the Brazen Pegasus, oh. to take you to the. What to a the name! It will take a few days. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not much of a seafarer, I'm afraid. Will we have an unruly captain that will eventually take beautiful artifacts from our hands and break her heart? <laughs> I trust Autime to not betray you, but I can't promise she won't be a little wild. She's the adventurous sort. Will she remain on the ship? Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> she, has, <laughs> she has been paid to wait in Port Nyanzang ten days, otherwise she will return to Waterdeep. We have ten days. I have twelve days. I have twenty days to live, but ten days for the ship to remain. You can always hire another ship to bring you back. I'm going. We could do with a favour. <laughs> Perhaps there is one more thing I can do to convince you, if you are at least a little bit on the edge. My agents... The Harpers have told me that one Laskalar Flisk mm. prepares to set sail for Chult tomorrow as well. Seems he intends to use the staff to find the city. He's here? He is in Waterdeep somewhere, but my people have not been able to locate him. I think he is keeping to the back channels. Did he have a long cylindrical package on his back? He was carrying a number of items that my agents did identify. I believe one of them to be the staff. Well, that settles it. We have to go and get after that backstabbing bastard. Quite. Hmm. Quite. I believe so. So, Maybe do we, we have an agreement? His ship. Yes. It's worth a lot. Yes. Good thinking, Fear. That'll teach him. That'll teach yeah. him for crossing bloody Sir Cromsby. You're more than welcome to try and locate him if you wish. The Brazen Pegasus will be waiting in the harbour for you if you do not manage to locate it. Uh, the captain is a gnome called Autumne. You will know her when you see her. Very well. Um, do you have any other questions? All right, let's get down to business. Yes. Money. Yes. <laughs> so, what are we thinking? I will do it for free. Do you wish to discuss this in private, Fimperella? I'm flirting outrageously with Favour. Yes, we but <laughs> Favour's just like, I need to go... A ship? I, I will, think for your I assistance... I will protect you. I think for your <laughs> assistance sake, <laughs> we better uh, take this one outside. Very Come well. along, Kayla. Right, oh you, like, they drag you away from favour. It's like hyperventilating I'm into a sack. I'm just telling her I'm going to protect her. Right, money. What are you thinking, Fia? All of it. All of She's, it. Consider this. She's dying. She needs us in order to live. She would give anything. That's I'm true. just saying. 2,000 gold or more? More. 3,000. No, no, no. 5,000. Bigger. 10,000. All right. 20, so you come back in. Have you, have you discussed the matter? Yes. Yes, please. 20,000 gold. <laughs> 20,000? Yes. She thinks for a moment. She pauses. Given the circumstances. And that is your final offer, I assume. Yes, no less. And no more. <laughs> and she nods her head. 20,000 it shall be. Fuck me, it actually works. <laughs> <laughs> So, Crumsby, my estate has accumulated quite a lot of gold. It's worth nothing if I die. It'll be the best money you've ever spent, me dear. I certainly You'll hope so. You'll be looking young and radiant before you know it. I, I certainly hope so. Um, I can arrange rooms for you in the, one of the finest inns in the city. Mm. Uh, paid for by myself, all expenses. Uh, food, drink, whatever you require. Mm. Can you drink with that jaw? Uh, food and drink has become difficult, yes. Oh, I must study this. This is phenomenal. I would rather you did no, not. No. There are clerics in the city who understand more. If you wish to learn about it, you'd have wasted if you died without this knowledge. Frisky, yes. leave the beautiful lady alone. I will say this: what the clerics have said that this uh, 
this curse, it doesn't just affect those on the Sword Coast. Anyone, anywhere in Toril, if they die, they cannot be returned to life. And those who have died previously are slowly suffering. I know that even famous heroes of the realm, uh, great wizards and warriors, even adventuring guilds, uh, those, what do they call themselves, acquisitions incorporated here in the city, they have suffered, one of their number, decays and rots with this curse as well. It is not something to trifle with. Do be careful. Right. Should have asked for more. We kill Flisk before we lift the curse. She oh, smiles. That would be a painful death. Yes, that would be quite the tort. That would be quite the punishment, I think. Very well. I shall have my men and a carriage take you wherever you need to go, to the finest inn or anywhere else. Um, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. You still have one. That hasn't rotted away yet. She places a hand over a chest. I believe so. I take notes. It will soon be mine. You are quite incorrigible, Miss Ragehorn. You should be careful, though. There are some that would um, take advantage of your kindness. Honestly, if she doesn't win it with flirting, she'll literally rip it out of you. <laughs> well, <laughs> and we've yet works. to encounter someone who it's worked on. Flesk. Ran away. One day. No, not One any day. day. No My day. Love. No day. <laughs> We've talked about this. I'm going to need you to start giving me money every time you hit on Just me. Just add it to the like tab. A, like a swear <laughs> jar. Just add it to the tab. Okay. I'm going to keep this. I do there. actually have the tab. You do? You want to know. Excellent. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So, you guys head off. Uh, the night is pretty peaceful. You guys are taken to one of the best inns in Waterdeep, uh, the Gilded Swan. Um, it is plush establishments, big, soft, feathery beds. Finest wines, finest food, whatever you need, and a good night's rest is had by all. You're weak with a bit of a hangover for uh, Sir Cromsby, um, but the rest of you feeling quite well. Um, what time do you want to head out, and what do you want to do? I'm going to spring up, awake. You have your basket. It's carried with you. Blanket needed. No. Kayla! Kayla! What? It's awful. It's terrible. My ball. I left it in the plant pot <laughs> in the society. You must go get it, please. No. Why not? Because you're letting me down, man. How? You're meant to be my wingman. Oh, I was supposed to help with the disfigured woman. And, and favor. And fear. You seem to be doing okay with the tiefling. I don't know. I don't think she likes it. I let you go it alone, and if you start failing, that's when the cat's out the bag. <laughs> all right, you better promise to help me on this adventure, all right? As long as we get into the, the good stuff, you know, the beautiful ancient architecture <laughs> and the puzzles and the dress. Yes. Yes, I and the runes on the oh, wall. Oh, the runes. Yeah. If they're anything like the ones we saw with Plisk, oh my God. Right, so that's you two. Are you gonna go and try and get his ball from the society? No, I've got another one. Are you gonna can you pull out another similar ball? <laughs> <laughs> you pretend to go get it. Um, Fia, what would you like to do in the morning? What's your plan? Would you want to, and don't forget, you also might want to think about supplies. Uh, as far as you know, it is going to at least be a quite a... You're talking like a good maybe a week or something like that to get there. So she's paid for this room and everything. Has paid for the room and stuff? paid for food for us yep. when we wake up? So yep. yeah, I'm you just going to You can stuff eat. yourself. All of yeah. the food that I can yep. manage Absolutely. because it's free. You can throw it in bags. Yep, I'm pretty much going to be It won't last it. very long. Like, literally, like, taking sweets and cakes and fruit, it will probably rot in a day or two. You probably with want to, things mind, like rations and stuff. With that in mind, I am going to go with my big bag of food. Go up to Crom. Crom, we're going to need supplies. Yes. And you are going to have to buy them. Is, is she not paying for everything? I don't know, but... If we get a receipt, maybe she'll pay for it then. Business expenses. Yes, that's right. You've got to think of these things. Don't get swindled by these people. No, not uh, at all. I'm so, not getting diddled. So you, you're going to go grab those supplies then, yeah? Yes, go yeah. on, let's go get some bits and bobs. Crumb, crumb, crummy, crumb. So crumb. crummy. I like that. Yes, I write a note. <laughs> so crummy. So crummy. Uh, could you fetch me a fishing rod, thank you. A fishing rod? Yes. I'll be procuring all my fresh fish on the ship. <sighs> Very you well. Fish? Yes. It's coming out of your pay, mind. What pay? Well, I said I'd do it for free. I'll take his share. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. One fishing rod. 
Yes. I won't pay for that. And some bait tackle and some string, which will not break. Oh, bloody That's hell, you're meant to be a cat, man. Can't you go and catch fish. your own fish with your claws or your teeth or I'm something? I'm not going in the water. I could dangle you. Yes. No. By no. the tail. By the tail. The longest fishing rod you can find, so I can sit right in the middle of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> can I buy you a little hat? Yes, the sun. I don't want it to uh, fade my fur. Yeah, that's the other thing you guys are actually saying that now that you guys think about that. Like, heading southwest, you will be going towards the co uh, equator, effectively, of the tutorial. It will get quite hot. Oh my god, so, I'm so looking forward to So, this. what things would you like to buy in your supply run? We've got one fishing rod, so write that down. Um, in terms of money, don't worry about marking off the money. Okay. Because um, most of the supplies are going to be pretty cheap. Sun cream? There's no such thing. <laughs> but shade, you probably want things like parasols or hats and hats. things like that. Uh, so, you want fishing rod. Hats, hats yeah. for all. Parasols, anything else? What else would you guys want to take with you? Cl clothing that's not so thick. Okay, so warm weather clothing. Um, mosquito repellent. Uh, no such thing. Shark um, spray. There's like shark spray. Oh, I'll, say, I'll say there's like herbal <laughs> ointments for getting rid of insects. Actually, yes, yeah, so you can have like anti-insect ointments. Anything else? Sunglasses. Just anything you guys want. Do you guys want to take Range. anything? Like, We're all going telescopes. <laughs> summer holidays. You are getting a bit of a summer holiday. Yeah. Yeah. To a binoculars. Global jungle. jungle. Yeah, so you want like binoculars? Yeah, yeah you can have a pair of binoculars. Yeah. Yep. Pod Job converters. Done. Nope. Yeah. Don't need those. <laughs> so, okay, so you just general little bits and bobs, but you're also, not going to, like, nothing. Guys, there's a curse where if you die, you can't be brought back. I was going to say, do you want to buy things like healing, healing potions? No. Now those yes. you are actually going to have to pay die. for. I don't want to die before we get 20,000 gold. No, that makes sense. That would be rather annoying. All right, we'll get some healing potions. Right. So a standard healing potion in the yes. city of Waterdeep, because right. it is a massive commercial hub, yes. costs 75 gold. What? Oh. Yeah, it's above market Bum price. Rum. I don't have that money. Use that all. If you want to buy better healing potions, they cost significantly more. Um, Bum rum. Um, I believe this is probably wrong, but I'm going to say 200 for a greater. Oh, fuck that. I've only got 500. Right, we'll... Well, you've got the gemstones and things like that. They, oh, they, you yes, have those that are value. Yes. <laughs> um, also, um, after spending some time with your amulet, so Cromsby, um, it is a... Uh, what's it called? Checking up in the... Dungeon Master's Guide, <laughs> looking up things that you need. Uh, b -b 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 Ooh, I have a way that we can find it. Is it called something else? Go on. My magical uh, thingy-majig, Ancestor Amulet, once a day finds my heart's desire. Really? Mm. Interesting. He is still your heart's desire. Favors starting again. Um, your necklace, Sir Cromsby, yes. is called a necklace of adaptation. Mm. Uh, while wearing this necklace, you can breathe normally in any environment and you have advantage on saving throws made against harmful gases and vapors. Nice. So, Interesting. So, what shall I I should point out, I need a house rule, it doesn't let you breathe underwater. Okay. But it, like, if there's no air, you can still breathe. If it's poisonous oh, gas, right, you can breathe. in water. If you go in water, yes. You're about to go on a ship. So, uh, so sorry, you were talking about finding for. And did you want to buy potions, by the way? Yes. What should we say? Four, four healing potions. Regular ones. Yes. So that's going to be seventy-five each, one hundred and fifty, three hundred gold. Fine, fair enough. And the rubies are worth two hundred each, so you could spend one of the rubies and I'm, throw I'll, some cash. I'm going to spend my ruby to get a greater one for myself. Okay, so you get a greater. You're going to divvy out the potion one each. <laughs> one yes. each. Four to Sir Crumsby, <laughs> none to the rest of you. Sounds about right. <laughs> I'm not dying. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you, yeah, Waterdeep is this huge, massive metropolis. You can find pretty much anything you need here. Um, so you managed to find these things. Now, I heard something about trying to track down Flisk. You wanted to use your little. Uh, yeah, thing. do we want to? Oh, yes. Spend time doing that? Well, he knows where he's going, so. He can we go to the. the yes. We could go and look for his ship. You know what it looks like, you know the Sturge. That's true. We could just go and look for his ship. It might be near the one that we're uh, hired. It might be, if the DM is benevolent and <laughs> kind. Depends. Uh, so what, what is it you guys want to do? Well, Tell me. We can always go down to the docks and look, and if we don't see it, I'll do my heart's desire thing. Who is the best at speaking to Flisk, not Kayla? Because 
we need to come at him from a different angle, not at him angrily. We need mm. to stab him in the back. I not wouldn't the front. be angry with him. Uh, I'd definitely I be very angry. But can you keep it down? I do think Kayla, you know, she does want to molest the poor man, so. <laughs> I just want his rod. Butter him up, and then Cromsby and Fear. I him. can stab him. We kill him in his own ship. Nice. We take him down to the bottom. Okay. Are you I'm sure going... she might do something with his bottom, but <laughs> I don't want to uh, think about that. Um, and then we need to revive him. We can't. You can't if you <laughs> no. kill him. No resurrections. Yeah. Can we call upon the water deep lady? What was her name? No, she couldn't do it because there was no soul. The curse is no well, soul. Well, you're not listening. Yes. People who died That's why I said, let's already. kill him before we lift the curse. So he, so can't he come dies, up. yes. Oh, I thought you wanted to raise him from the dead and then disfigure him slowly over time. No, 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 we I just want him as dead as a door now. who died before the curse yes. came, like before, like Did anybody who tell? dies while the curse is in effect can't be raised. That's quite important for you guys to know. If you die, yeah. there's no raising this time. <laughs> no that. magic face spirits coming against Juto back. You're dead, okay? Oh, is Juto looking creepy? Uh, no, because this is a different world, so. Um, so, you guys head down to the docks. Now, as you head down to the docks, the docks of Waterdeep are massive! <laughs> <laughs> it is huge. We are talking like so, massive port town, coastal. ships everywhere. You probably spend maybe an hour trying to find the Sturge, but you don't see it amongst all these other huge vessels. Um, you have the address, you know where your ship is going to be, but you don't know where uh, Flisks is. Use it already. I hate the smell of sea water. It's, it's really salty fresh. and fresh. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I'm hungry. Use it. Okay. Let's find him. Okay. Uh, so you're going to use your uh, ancestor amulet? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, ancestor amulet, because ancestor is the ones in the past. You're the descendant. Yes. Oh, I think so. I can never remember. Everyone yells at me about Ancestors it. Ancestors in the past. Yeah, I'm sure that's the right, yeah? Yeah. yeah. And then you're the descendant. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So you pull this out and you summon it and you feel this kind of throbbing pulse. Ah, uh, this kind of... Uh -oh. <laughs> and then rising from the ground <laughs> like a ghost. You are worse than me. A ghostly bear arrives no, and it kind of... No, 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 no. <laughs> it is a, a half an orc who looks a lot like Worf from the next generation, <laughs> but he's wearing like orc clothes um, and he just silently looks and he waits for your question. Dearest ancestor, I search for I my salute. heart's desire. Can you point me in the direction? My heart's desire is this stuff. Okay, he like nods and then he points out to sea, past the great uh, sea gates that block off the port of um, Waterdeep. And he points can out Can we that all way. see the figure? Yes, in fact, you can. Great. The people of Waterdeep, points. by the way, do not give a shit. Like, <laughs> they're used to giants just hanging around in their city, like wizards and warriors, they're just like, mm, ghost guy, and they just carry <laughs> on. When he points to indicate that he's already left, I'm just gonna go, mother. <laughs> He's bugging yes, off already! It's my <laughs> hey. Maybe he's already drowned. He's pointing at the cork. He hasn't drowned. Uh, I was actually asking about the rod. Oh. He'll be with that. He wouldn't oh. leave that. Okay, so do you guys want to try and find your ship now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Ancestor. Like, I'm like yeah. super respectful. Yeah, like, no, he, it's a totally different side Kayla. of me. Like, he bows very deep, I'm gives still you a salute, and I salute then back. Fades I'm not away. being respectful in any way, shape, or form. I'm just cursing under my breath. See. Staring at you. Uh, you find the Brazen Pegasus. Uh, it is a uh, not a huge vessel, but a, a speedy looking vessel. Uh, three sails, four sail, uh, a main mast, and an aft sail. Um, it's quite. It's, it's what they call a sloop. Uh, I, I learnt about pirate ships. Oh. Uh, it's called a sloop. <laughs> nice. um, it's maybe sort of, uh, you know, 50 to 60 feet long, um, and you can see that there's only a crew of about seven working on the deck. Um, it looks like it's got one top deck and one lower deck. Uh, no, there's no like cannons or anything like that. There's no like ballistae or anything like that. There is rigging. There is also like 
points where people could fire crossbows and you can see that the men on deck have got crossbows and things like that. Um, but you can see kind of shouting orders with her feet kind of up on a barrel, uh, kind of smoking a long cigarette on like a cigarette holder is this gnome with bright blue hair that's kind of like been swept back, kind of short cropped, uh, loose blouse, no bra or anything like that, just letting the wind fly as it needs to. Um, a pair of trousers with a curved saber at a belt is this gnome uh, who's just like, come on, you lazy fucks, get moving and stuff like that. And it's just like crying out at them and things like that. And they're kind of like, ah, and they will laugh and they carry on. And she has a good laugh and things like that. Um, and yeah, you can see this, the sail has a, uh, a Pegasus kind of like, very defiantly kind of surging forward and you're pretty sure that this is the race of progress. You also notice it because you can see Favor pacing up and down on the deck, buried in a book, just like mumbling to herself, just like, uh, um, like you can see way too much packing, like way too much luggage for her as well. She has like four bags. <laughs> Most of them look like they're filled with books. <laughs> nice to see your traveling light, Favor. And she looks up, uh, uh, oh, Sir Crumsby, uh, well, I thought I should bring all the volumes about Chult that I had, um, and then I also brought uh, a few about um, um, ancient artifacts, just to see if there was anything about the staff in there that we could use. Um, I needed my writing uh, implements as well, just in case I have to make notes, of course. Um, and then I, I brought uh, three changes of, of warm clothes, but I also brought uh, some cold clothes, because I wasn't sure maybe there might be some magical blizzard or something. Um, and then she rambles off like a bunch of other things things that she's brought, just like nervously While babbling. she's talking, I'm going to try and sneak around and then look through all the books. Okay. Yeah, like, she's completely oblivious. Like, she just isn't there. Um, there's tons in here, like, older-looking ah, tombs, newer-looking ones. Um, one's all about Chaltean culture. You see something about dinosaur races, and you're, like, oh. ah, flicking through. Um, you see something about, like, yeah, ancient cities. You see a picture of, like, it looks like a tiny little frogman with a spear, and it's called a grung, and you're like, oh, that looks interesting, and you flick through that. I'm trying um, to pocket three or four on my robes. Uh, you get, like, one in your robes, and then the rest are all comically sticking out of pockets and things like that. <clears throat> um, and, yeah, she's just babbling away, and then the rock name's like, oh, so you're the crew that the ladies purchased, eh? Well, welcome aboard. The name's Ortemi. You can call me Captain. And uh, are you ready to set sail? Have you got all your things? I think we're ready. You all ready for our journey? How fast is this ship? Will you get us there quickly? Oh, this is one of the fastest ships in Waterdeep, oh, I'll tell you that it is. We can go very slowly and carefully. No, no, we want to get there as quick as possible. Don't want to be yes. caught out in a storm at sea. Do you have rooms below deck? We have one big cargo deck. I have a room, which is mine. Uh, you will all have some hammocks down in the cargo deck, hammocks. but once we get to the warm weather, you'll want to be sleeping up here, I can assure you. Well, I'm used to sleeping rough, you know, as a seasoned oh, explorer. You look like a sturdy man, I see. <laughs> you look like a strong chappy. Oh, I bet you love sleeping rough, don't you, you dirty bastard? <laughs> oh, look at you. <laughs> oh, yes, well. is just going to sort of gag a little bit as <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, loving this woman. Like, and she's like, oh, look at this lassie. Woo! She like looks up. I'd have to get on a step ladder to have a go at her. Eh? And then like, like, like. I <laughs> just have one arranged. Ah, I'm sure we can, lass. I'll tell you what, you get on my good side, maybe I'll let you sleep in my cabin. You know what I mean? How do I do such things? What is your good side? How do I get on it? Uh, well, you gotta have a good love for life. Don't be boring and be up for having a bit of fun. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Sounds good to me. I'll read you a book about frog. No, fuck books. <laughs> I like this oh, I tell you what, she's one after me own heart. Yeah, see, I like this boy here. Yeah, look at this charming young man I see. Oh, young <laughs> man, well, I've not been called that in a few hundred years. Oh, that surprises me. And she kind of like gives you a little wink. Um, and she goes like, great, well, enough of the flirting. Let's get to business. Are we all ready? Get on board, put your things down below and we'll get sailed. Uh, can one of you look after the nervous looking tiefling? It's making me on edge, just the way she walks around and babbles, it's weird. I think she's going to summon up some sort of bailor or something. I'll do that. Oh, very well, good. Let's take care of that. Rubble! And she shouts out to this hulking man with a big, massive grey beard. Looks a bit like Patrick Rothfuss. And he just kind of is just like, Rah! And she's like, get everybody ready, we're setting sail in a few. Um, and with that, uh, we're going to finish off today with you guys basically setting sail, leaving the port of Waterdeep, and beginning your adventure to Chult, 
where you will try and find oh. the lost city of Omu. Uh, that is it for the very first episode of High Rollers Uncharted Territory. These sessions are only going to be two hours. Uh, we are going to try and read donations. I think I might have to go get the laptop to do that. I think if there we, have uh, any. we could probably finish oh, up. Oh, no, he's got them. Look at that. If possible, Sam, we could probably finish up on the D&D stream so that the donations aren't yes. necessarily read on that yeah, one. So if we can finish <laughs> up on D&D, &D, uh, thank you for everybody who watched us on the D&D stream. Thank, thank you so much. You. We will be back next Friday for more High Rollers Uncharted Territory. Same time, same Twitch channels. Or if you'd like some more D&D action, you can join us on Sunday on twitch.tv forward slash yogscast on 5 p.m. BST. Um, use World Time Buddy to convert it because I don't know. Uh, and uh, you can watch our regular game, High Rollers, uh, which is a 10th level homebrew campaign currently, um, which should be quite fun as well. Going for a you year. Could, it's been going for a year, 50 episodes. You could follow us at High Rollers d, &D on Twitter if you want to keep up with the things that we We're do doing. in general. So Katie's got Kate Gold, Social Media Queen, has got that covered. Uh, so there you go. So thank you, Sam. If you can finish us up on d, &D and then we're going to read donations over on twitch.tv forward slash yogscast. Um, and yeah, thanks to everybody who, who watched us through. Uh, and thanks for Wizards. Awesome. Yes, really and big thank, thank you to Wizards. Wizards. You're the best. Greg, Chris, the best. all the team, Trevor, oh Bar. Thank you guys so much. And I hope that. Did you guys have fun with this first episode of Uncharted Territory? Like, I know I've got you on camera, so you have to say nice uh, things. We just have to stop and start to cut the stream on DD. &D. Oh, okay, really? So we could stop and then go back on. Should yours. we do that? Because I think it's better, isn't it, that we yeah, keep it off DD? So we're going to stop so and start. We're going to go offline temporarily on Yellscast. But we'll but be don't back. Don't worry, we'll be back. Read your donation. So thank Once you, Sam, for sorting that out.